In write-ups of HBO's The Gilded Age Season 2, we find mention of the Duke of Buckingham, where he is described as a posh British nobleman recently arrived in New York, whom Bertha Russell immediately eyes as a match for Gladys in line to become a dollar princess. Is this going to happen? Will she be sold off by Bertha to British aristocracy? How closely will Gladys's storyline follow the trajectory of a dollar princess? We have yet to see the answer in any trailer or promotional video by HBO for season two. So the burning question right now is, will Gladys Russell be doomed to the same fate as her historical counterpart, Consuelo Vanderbilt? One would guess so, since we know that Bertha Russell is a fictionalized version of Alva Vanderbilt, and that Alva sold her daughter Consuelo for rank in real life. My guess is that Gladys's story will be a composite of several of the real dollar princesses that graced the pages of history during the Gilded Age. On that note, this video is part one of the stories of the many dollar princesses during that time in American history and what it meant to be forced to marry into British aristocracy for the sake of prestige in the Gilded Age. Let's begin. During the Gilded Age, which took place in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, American heiresses were making headlines by marrying into European aristocracy. These young women, known as dollar princesses, were often the daughters of newly wealthy American industrialists seeking to gain social status through marriage. They were sought after for their substantial dowries, which could be used to maintain the lavish lifestyles of the European nobility. Their stories are as diverse as the women themselves. From Consuelo Vanderbilt, who married the Duke of Marlborough to become the Duchess of Marlborough, to Jenny Jerome, who became Lady Randolph Churchill and mother to Sir Winston Churchill, these dollar princesses had different experiences when it came to forced marriages. Some faced scrutiny, skepticism, and even outright snobbery from the established European elite, who viewed their American counterparts as nouveau riche interlopers, while others found fulfillment, even happiness in their arranged wedlock. Here are just two of the many dollar princesses of the Gilded Age, starting with the very first, Jenny Jerome, the daughter of a real estate developer from Brooklyn. In 1874, Jenny Jerome married Lord Randolph Churchill, bringing substantial wealth to her new husband. Upon their marriage on April 15, 1874, Jenny became known as Lady Randolph Churchill. For Jenny, the marriage offered a certain amount of freedom. Randolph had been smitten with her and didn't marry her just for the money. With the promise of money and feelings of lust, Jenny elicited a promise from Randolph that he allow her to do exactly as she liked. With her newfound independence, Jenny had numerous lovers during her marriage, including the Prince of Wales, Milan I of Serbia, Prince Karl Kinski, and Herbert von Bismarck. Jenny had a penchant for men with mustaches, and her extramarital affairs became a source of scandal and gossip among high society circles. She is said to even have had an affair with King Edward VII. Lady and Lord Randolph had two sons, Winston and John, Winston Churchill's birth timeline sparked controversy, with some speculating that he might have been conceived before the marriage. Rumors also circulated about the parentage of their second son, John, but these were mostly discredited due to his resemblance to his father. As parents, Jenny and Lord Randolph fell short of Victorian standards. They left their sons to be raised by nannies, rarely visiting them at boarding school. However, despite their distant relationship during their childhood, Jenny formed a close bond with Winston as he grew older. She became his political mentor and advisor, guiding him in his career and providing support and advice. Jenny's influence extended beyond her personal life. She was a political force in her own right and played a significant role in her husband's career as well. Jenny's charm, wit, and intelligence made her an excellent political hostess, and she was highly regarded by politicians and socialites alike. There is more to Jenny Jerome's story that I would like to tell, so if you are interested, let me know in the comments and I will be sure to do a full video on this dynamic and independent dollar princess of the Gilded Age. Now we have Consuelo Vanderbilt, the dollar princess most resembling Gladys Russell in the Gilded Age TV show. Not only is Gladys associated, given her mother Bertha's portrayal of Alva Vanderbilt, 
Gladys's character is also fashioned in a wispy, angelic-like manner. When you see pictures of Consuelo Vanderbilt, we get the same impression. Her beauty was said to be ephemeral in nature. She had a slender, graceful figure. Her posture was impeccable and she moved with an air of refinement. Very much like Gladys, Consuelo had a flawless complexion that was often described as porcelain-like. Her skin was fair and radiant, accentuating her willowy features. Her eyes were one of her most captivating features, characterized by their large size, deep blue color, and an intensity that seemed to draw people in. They were often described as pools of sapphire. Consuelo Vanderbilt is the classic fairy tale princess who was denied the promise of marrying the man she loved, while being forced into a life of misery with a man she did not love and who, it is reported, was unduly unkind to her. This makes for great drama. And since HBO's The Gilded Age is all about drama, we are sure to see at least some of Consuelo's story in the plotlines for Gladys in season two and the seasons to come. I personally am looking for a mix of the whimsical Consuelo with the chutzpah of Jenny Jerome. Let me know what you think in the comments below. In the meantime, let's briefly go over what happened to Consuelo in real life history. Born to Alva Vanderbilt, a formidable and domineering mother, Consuelo Vanderbilt's upbringing was meticulously controlled, setting her on a path to marry European nobility. Alva was determined that her daughter would become part of the British aristocracy. Consuelo was named after Consuelo, Duchess of Manchester, one of the few duchesses Alva knew at the time. Her education included fluency in French and German by age eight, extensive travel, and rigorous tutoring. She endured a steel brace for perfect posture and private lessons in history, literature, mathematics, Latin, and science. Her mother left no stone unturned in preparing her for high society. At the age of 16, Consuelo met Winthrop Rutherford, with whom she fell deeply in love. Despite the disapproval of Alva, they engaged in a secret relationship. However, Alva's determination to marry her daughter into British nobility led to a secret engagement between Consuelo and Charles Spencer Churchill, the ninth Duke of Marlborough. Consuelo's resistance to marrying the Duke was met with extreme measures, including confinement and threats. Only when Alva feigned a severe illness and appeared near death did Consuelo reluctantly give in. The grand wedding took place in 1895, but it was marred by Consuelo's tears behind her veil and the Duke's abandonment of his own love back in England in exchange for a substantial dowry. In Alva Vanderbilt's defense, she believed that the role of Duchess would bring fulfillment to Consuelo due to the associated influence and prestige which Alva herself could never attain in the old money society of New York. Unfortunately, Consuelo had limited opportunities to express her own opinions in this matter. On the Duke's part, his primary motivation was financial. Consuelo's wealth was essential to maintain Blenheim Palace, let alone fund the renovations he envisioned. Her substantial fortune enabled him to restore Blenheim to its current grandeur, as the estate still proudly showcases today. Consuelo therefore became the most prominent of the dollar princess heiresses from the United States who married into aristocratic families from Europe. Upon marrying the Duke, Consuelo entered the family of Winston Churchill, who would remain a cherished friend and confidant throughout her life. Interestingly, Churchill had been the heir to the Duke of Marlborough until Consuelo and the Duke welcomed their first son in 1897, which freed Churchill to pursue a political career. In 1898, Consuelo and the Duke had a second son, a moment when she is said to have coined the phrase, an heir and a spare. While Consuelo found reasonable success in English society and in her duties as a duchess, the fundamental truth was that she and the Duke were a mismatch in terms of temperament. The Duke, a reserved and earnest man who had endured an unhappy childhood, was deeply dedicated to the duty he had inherited. However, Consuelo perceived him as aloof, snobbish, and overly concerned with appearances. It's often noted that the Duke's nickname, Sonny, did not reflect his personality, but was merely derived from his initial courtesy title, the Earl of Sunderland. After enduring a full 26 years of a loveless relationship, the couple eventually divorced in 1921. 
Consuelo went on to find meaning in her life as a political activist. She supported the suffrage movement early on, and true love with a less exalted but more simpatico companion.